you may be wondering how to answer author purpose questions. In this video, I will work through an example of author purpose, author's purpose questions using a four-step reading strategy. Angela here from Custom Classroom, helping make test prep simple. So let's quickly review what is an author's purpose question. An author's purpose question is really asking for the reason why the author chose to write the text or include certain parts. Usually they are trying to persuade, inform, entertain, explain, or describe, or you could say pied. To work through an author's purpose question, I like to use my four-step reading strategy. I've made another video specifically about this strategy, but in it we will one scan, two target text, three actively read, and four respond. Now let's work through a few author's purpose questions. Step one, scan the questions. Is the question a whole question, which requires information from throughout the entire passage to answer the question? Or is it a part question where students will need to return to only one section of the text? Now let's look at the first question. Why does the author choose to say the men were on alert? This is a part question since you will need to return to this select the section that's just discussing the men being on alert. Now let's look at the second question. What is the author's purpose? This is a whole question since you need to look at the entire text or passage to figure out what the author is trying to say or why he or she specifically wrote this text. Now let's look at question three. What text evidence helped you decide the author's purpose? This is a part question since it looks at just a piece of the text that's going to be a specific text evidence or support for your answer here. Step two, target the text. Let's look at this passage about the time machine. The thing that the time traveler held in his hand was a glittering metallic framework, scarcely larger than a small clock and very delicately made. There was ivory in it and some transparent crystalline substance. And now I must be explicit for this that follows. Unless this explanation is to be accepted, it is an absolute unaccountable thing. He took one of the small octagon, octagonal tables that were scattered about the room and set it in front of the fire with two legs on the hearth rug. On this table, he placed the mechanism. Then he drew up a chair and sat down. The only other object on the table was a small shaded lamp. The bright light of it fell, of which fell upon the model. There were also perhaps a dozen candles about two in brass candlesticks upon a mantel and several in sconces so that the room was brilliantly illuminated. I sat in a low armchair nearest the fire and I drew this forward so as to be almost between the time traveler and the fireplace. Philby sat beside, behind him looking over his shoulder. The medical man and the provincial mayor watched him in profile from the right, the psychologist from the left. The very young man stood behind the psychologist. We were all on the alert. So now that we've had a chance to read the text or target the text, we can see that this is a fictional passage about the time traveler. So for step three, actively read, I would have students go back and reread and think about the setting, character, problem, and solution. Here, we're gonna go ahead and address those. Setting is, being described kind of throughout the whole passage is this brightly lit room with the fireplace. Characters are the time traveler, the narrator, and there's five other characters that are kind of all huddled around. The problem here is much harder because most of this passage is very descriptive and what's going on, but there's this feeling of this unknown of what's going to happen with this mechanism or this machine on the table. Um, so there's kind of a little bit of suspense of unknown. So here, in this case, the solution hasn't happened yet because they're kind of leaving you with this anticipation of what's to happen next, how, um, how is it all going to turn out. So now we're going to target or respond to the questions. And so 
let's start with looking at question two, since it is a whole question. I like to start with the whole questions because we have the whole passage fresh in our mind. So here the question is, what is the author's purpose? A, to persuade. Well, this is not correct because there is no part of the passage that is trying to get me to think or feel a certain way. B, to inform. This is also incorrect since it's not really teaching me anything. It just seems to mostly be describing this room and this machine. C, to entertain. This is also incorrect because there's really no excitement. There's a little bit of suspense about what's to happen next, but I don't think that's the overall uh, point of why the author included this section. D, explain. Well, we should think about explain since it's so closely related to E to describe. So let's talk about these and how they are different so we can see which one is going to be best fit this specific passage. So to explain means to make an idea, idea clearer by describing in more detail or giving more facts. To describe means to give lots of details to paint a verbal picture of what is happening. So thinking about it this way, D to explain is really incorrect since we're not really learning more about an idea. We are E um, to describe where this is the best answer since the passage is really overall trying to vividly paint a picture of what's happening in this room. Now let's look at question three since it relates directly to question two. So it says, what text evidence helped you decide the author's purpose? So here we need to look back into the text and figure out which ones is showing that it is actually, the point is to describe and paint this picture. So here are two examples. There are a lot of examples in the story of descriptive language, but here they are. It says, um, there's a glittering metallic framework, scarcely larger than a small clock and very delicately made. There was ivory in it and some transparent crystalline substance. So very descriptive where I can basically picture what this um, thing looks like that he's holding. Or he took one of the small octagonal tables that was scattered about the room and set it in front of the fireplace with two legs on the hearth rug. On this table, he placed the mechanism. So again here, both of these are creating a, a great picture in my mind of exactly what is happening. The author is using a ton of descriptive language here and he, he's trying to uh, paint this picture for us. So both of these examples are good text evidence to prove that the point here, the author's purpose was this to describe what's going on. So now um, let's go back to question one, since it's all a part question. And I like to save the part questions for at the end because then we go back and just look into these specific places. Um, so here it says, why does the author choose to say the men were on alert? So this is relating back to this specific part here at the end. So I'm going to reread this so we can think about that. It says that I sat in a low armchair nearest the fire and I drew this forward so as to be almost between the time traveler and the fireplace. Philby sat behind him looking over his shoulder, the medical man and the provincial mayor watched him in profile from the right, the psychologist from the left, the very young man stood behind the psychologist. We were all on the alert. So let's see which of these answer choices are gonna best see why alert was specifically used. Let's look at A, to describe the mood. Well, that sounds pretty great because it goes with the descriptive language that these characters are all standing around kind of anticipation of what will happen next. So the mood is some anticipation and this word alert specifically um, emphasizes the fact that they're um, all waiting on edge to see what happens. B, to demonstrate their personality. Well, this is incorrect since the characters being on alert really has nothing to do with their individual personalities, but really the situation that's in front of them. C is to explain the audience. Again, this is incorrect since the characters, the characters are the audience, but this is really vague. It's not giving us a very specific of what is it explaining about the audience or what it's trying to say. D to show the importance. 
this is also not quite right since, um, well, yes, alert does show that this situation, what's going on is important and what's about to happen is important, but the author uses many more descriptive language words to help the reader make this conclusion. So alert um, seems more all about the overall mood than the importance of this moment. So if you're looking to practice a little bit more author's purpose with your students, you could check out my task cards on Teachers Pay Teachers. I hope you found this specific video helpful. If you're looking to teach more reading skills, you should check out my playlist and it will give an overview of other reading skills.